Welcome to another episode of Prophetic Perspective. We're here at the Pre-Trib Conference in Dallas, Texas in December of 2023, and I've got Olivier Melnick. Y'all are familiar with Olivier because he's been on several times talking about all things related to anti-Semitism and just what's happening in the world, uh, especially with regard to the Jewish people in the diaspora and in Israel. So Olivier, Correct. welcome back to Prophetic Perspective. Thanks for having me, good to see you. Well, you're looking very good, sir. So Thank you. I'll just ask this, Olivier, we obviously are, are hearkening to God's prophetic word. What drew you to a study and appreciation for the prophetic word in God's, uh, in God's revelation? Well, I, I Maybe I, I need to rephrase your, your question because I was thinking about it and it's studying Bible prophecy that drew me to God. Oh. And so it's the other way around. Okay. Because my wife, who back then was not my wife, said, I cannot marry you. You know, she's a Gentile, I'm a Jew. And we married for 40 years. And she said, you need to believe in, in Yeshua and Jesus. And I said, well, I don't, I'm Jewish. Can we just agree to disagree? And she showed me Messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. and. I looked at them in the Bible, and then I looked at them in the book, uh, The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey, and I thought, wow, all these have been fulfilled, literally. And then this guy is saying that the second part, the return of this Jesus, is going to be fulfilled. Why should I believe it's not going to be literal? And so the study of Messianic prophecies drew me to a belief in Yeshua. You know, that's a fantastic testimony, Olivia, because so many of our folks would say, well, I've never heard much about the, the prophecies of the Bible, but obviously I'm a follower of Christ. But really, if you study the prophecies, it draws you deeper into an appreciation for the person of Christ, the fact that he came the first time and he's coming again. And for the veracity of the, of the Bible. I mean, if, if all those things happen literally, then we can trust the Bible. So over time, as you continue to study, I, I take it that it's just deepened your commitment to Yeshua, to oh, absolutely, Messiah. Absolutely. The, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, comforted by the Messianic prophecies of the first coming, and I'm excited about the upcoming prophecies to be fulfilled about the second coming. Well, that brings me to, I guess, a, an obvious question. So many people look around at the world today and think, oh my goodness, what's happening in the world? The world seems to be falling apart. And then they run to scripture to try to find understanding instead of the other way around, being grounded in the word of God to understand what's going on from a foundational perspective. So have you seen a, a dramatic increase in interest in the signs of the times and in God's prophetic word? Yeah, and I think it was John Mark Hill who said, the world is not falling apart, it's falling into place. Yes. And I like that. It's it's all falling in place and it's, you know, we're, we're, you, a lot of people that I, I've, I've talked to in our circles, we all agree on one thing, the, the events that we're seeing in front of us are happening faster and the curve is going this way. It's like mm -hmm. a lot of events, are f it's, it's all falling into place. I don't think we're in the tribulation yet. I, I'm pre-trib, pre-mill, you know, like I always tell people, I don't even need post-cereal. So this, <laughs> this way I'm safe. Okay. But uh, um, I, I think that uh, people are starting to see what's, what's, what's falling into place. And I'm hoping that this is going to attract them to, to the Bible and the Bible might lead them to to the Lord. Amen. Because you see what's happening and a lot of people who don't have any knowledge of God um, or, or don't believe in, in Jesus, in Yeshua, uh, they, they, they push that stuff back. But when they start to compare what's happening and all the things falling into place in the Middle East and in the world and the one world government and the, and the cashless society, they're going like, wow, I've been told about this being discussed in the Bible, maybe I should pay attention. Maybe so that's I should my pay attention. You know, we talk about a series of signs that is revealed in the Bible, trying to systematize all that the Bible touches on, signs of nature, signs of society, signs of world politics, of technology, uh, signs that are spiritual in nature, but the greatest of all signs is the sign of Israel. And just in the last number of years, Israel has come back into existence with Jewish people streaming back to Israel. There's still some who remain uh, living abroad but just at the end of 2023, we saw a dramatic uh, and horrific attack on Israel. And I think that piqued a lot of people's interest as being yet another dramatic sign that something is afoot and maybe I should pay attention to what God's prophetic word has to say. We don't know the final outcome of this war, 
but we know the promises made to the Jewish people and to Israel that they will not be displaced and that God still has a plan for them. Well, we, absolutely in Jeremiah 31, 34 to 37, God gives a recipe to anybody who wants to completely uh, get rid of the Jews. He says, if you can measure the sky, the sun and the moon and count the stars, then I will forsake Israel for all that they have done to me. And so it's God's way, tongue in cheek, to say it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, in, unfortunately, there are always going to be some casualties and you know as we go through uh, through history uh, but uh, he's never going to forsake Israel but people need to watch what's happening uh, you know uh, in in the Middle East in Israel because um, the clock is ticking the clock and, is and, ticking. and, and uh, you know coming to uh, you know connecting that to what's happening with anti-semitism um, uh, on October 7th to 2023 uh, not only Israel was hit severely by by yeah, Hamas and, and, and like animals, uh, we, we all understand that. But I think the world, the whole world, turned another corner. And when you see the amount of anti-Semitism in in America and in the world, and and and, and the the boldness that people uh, uh, are experiencing and how they express their anti-Semitism, there's always been anti-Semitism. It was under you know under the car under the carpet when nobody was talking about it. A little bit here, a little bit there, but now it's like people are out. They're 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 proud of their anti-Semitism. They're almost. raging. Just they're the, raging. The, I mean, the yes. name Hamas uh, means rage, and of course, uh, we've seen rage in Scripture, and yet that's exactly what these satanically inspired people are doing who are uh, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, and want to do away with the Jewish people, they are raging today like never before. I think Satan realizes his time is short, oh, yeah. and that's why he's inspiring all this. You know, scoffers throughout the church age have said, oh, come on, uh, where's the sign of his coming? To quote Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, things continue as they always have. And yet today, I think even the scoffers are realizing, wait, something is, is afoot, and so we are witnessing signs that our great grandparents could not have even dreamed of because they were not being manifest even a hundred years ago, the way they're they're accelerating, as you said. Today. Especially not not before 1948. Yes, especially not. But uh, the, the the birth of the modern state of Israel. So yeah, absolutely. Well, do you see Jewish people in particular beginning to recognize those in the diaspora still that perhaps have not hearkened to faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Do you see a, a turning of the corner to where they're realizing, you know, perhaps I need to return to the faith of my fathers uh, because things are so dramatic in the world today? I'm seeing, uh, I, I'm seeing Jewish people, uh, I've talked to my own family in Europe, in France, and when I talk to them about anti-Semitism, uh, they, sometimes they even brush me off. They go like, ah, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. Uh, most of the Jews in Europe are very comfortable where they are. They are in a place where it's just you know they've established some 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 deep roots. They have they have uh, investments. They have their own property, and they're like you know like my own family. Mike, when I talk to my parents when they're still alive, they would always say like, I would never go to Israel. I mean, uh, we're we're fine here. And and anti-Semitism was not a big deal. Now uh, the level of anti-Semitism anti that we see. Uh, even on, on ma mainstream media, everywhere you turn a channel, the word anti-Semitism is on everybody's lips. I've never seen such a thing uh, in 23 years that I've been studying this. And uh, I think the Jewish people are at a place that right now when they're starting to realize we don't have much hope in anything. The world is against us. So I'm hoping, I'm praying that this, uh, this uh, situation that the Jewish people find themselves into will lead them to, uh, to 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 uh, desire to find uh, a, a deeper connection with God, but there's still, uh, and I, I I don't like saying that they're still um, uh, resisting. Uh, it, it is it, it is such a Jewish thing to be gospel resistant to resist Yeshua. And, and that's the one thing that u unites all Jewish people on the spectrum, from agnostic to super, ortho super orthodox. All Jews will agree on one thing, Jesus is not for us. 
Well, I will pray, uh, Olivier, that just as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we understand, I hope our viewers understand, that when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you're praying for the coming of the Messiah, because the, the, only, time, the only time Jerusalem will have true peace uh, is when the Prince of Peace reigns from Amen. Mount Zion. Amen. So that is a messianic prayer of come Lord Jesus uh, and, and Maranatha. But if we study Romans 9 through 11, in, in chapter 11, when Paul emphatically says Israel is not cast away, the Jewish people are not cast away, God has not washed his hands of them. But in verse 11, he said, They did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles, Gentiles to make them jealous. You know, Olivier, part of my goal is to make uh, unbelieving Jews jealous that I know and, and revere and worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and know the revealed person of the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, not because I want them to be jealous of me per se, but because I want them to be drawn to their Messiah. Jealous of what you have in Messiah. And that should be the goal of every Gentile Christian. Unfortunately, not in your case, but unfortunately, uh, over the, the, the centuries, uh, the Gentiles, uh, the Gentile Christians have uh, been more successful at making Jewish people angry yes. than jealous. Well. But this can be reversed. This can be reversed. We have to, uh, uh, Christians today have to uh, be willing to educate themselves on the history of the Jews and how the Jewish people have been persecuted by pseudo-Christians or even sometimes by Christians who misunderstood really what, what the Bible was all about. And it can always be reversed. It's never too late to do something to reach out to the Jewish people, especially right now, this time where, where uh, more than ever, the Jewish community, the global Jewish community, and, and in America, we have about 7 million, so about half of the Jewish population of the world, uh, they need to know that they have friends in the Christian community. They certainly so do. Christians cannot be silent. Silence is complicity. They, they, they cannot be silent. They have to be vocal. They have to stand up and they have to say, we stand with Israel, whatever cost. Whatever the cost. I hope that you have determined to stand with Israel, that you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and that, quite frankly, you seek to bless a Jew. Levier's pen here says, love Israel and be blessed, paraphrasing Genesis 12:3. I dare say, beyond even loving Israel, love the God of Israel. And not only will you in turn love Israel, but you will be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Olivier. Shalom. Shalom, shalom.